All right. Hello, everyone. We are live from the Nativo Sales Gallery here in downtown Miami. I am with my friend, uh, Danette De Leon. How are you doing, everybody? Who is a fantastic person, real estate agent, and also responsible of the sales of this incredible new development, Nativo. And uh, I'm going to let him start and introduce himself and tell him a little bit about Nativo. And uh, then we'll discuss about the growth of downtown and Miami and all these exciting things. Thank you, Benjamin. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you uh, on this beautiful Thursday morning to talk a little bit about Miami and our beautiful city and, and Nativo and, and just, you know, uh, everything real estate in general, which is always a, a pleasure to talk about. Um, so I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Danette De Leon. I am originally from Cuba. 100% uh, Cuban, born to both a uh, Cuban mother and Cuban father. Um, I lived in Cuba until I was uh, seven. I left Cuba at a very young age. Um, I moved to France, actually. Don't so we speak French, on, on peut parler en français. On peut parler français, y'a pas de problème. <laughs> so, um, I had the pleasure of living in the beautiful south of France for eight years um, during my childhood. I studied over there. Um, then I relocated to Miami to learn English. I studied English here in Miami, actually. Um, and, and I've been here ever since. I fell in love with the city, obviously, you know, like most of us. Um, fell in love with the weather, with the people. And it's very easy for Latinos, obviously, and, you know, not only Latinos, but people. Europeans as well. <laughs> of course. There's a yeah. huge European community here. Um, but you know, obviously it's very easy for Latinos to get accustomed to, to life in Miami because you know it's very it's a subtropical climate it's everybody you know speaks Spanish so so it's a lovely city to live in here and, and the opportunities are amazing so so here I am I've been working with the Cerrera Real Estate which is the company that manages the, the sales for the developer here at Nativo um, they specialize in development sales uh, I've been working with them for about five and a half years now going on to six years. I was part of another project before called Ari on the Bay, which we successfully sold out uh, 648 units over there in, in the Edgewater neighborhood. And, and I'm here today in this project, which, which I picked because it's really um, kind of like the new wave of real estate that is, that is coming online um, in the most recent years that has to do with short-term rentals and the ability of people to maximize their income with, with the apartments in Miami. And I'm very happy to be here, very happy to talk about this to today. And, and uh, thank yeah, you so for having me. My pleasure. And I think, you know, the reason I wanted to, to, to bring that in, not only he's a wonderful person, but I think the, this project, Nativo, is going to be something extraordinary and it's going to change the landscape of downtown Miami and the city of Miami. Um, so there, it, it's a combination of so many things. Then, do you want to tell us a little about what is Nativo? What, what is Nativo and what does it include? Uh, what are the people that are, that, are, that are buying here are looking for? Yeah, so, so before we get into that, I think we have to give people a little bit of a background knowledge, right, on, on, on what is happening with downtown Miami. Because, you know, one of the most important things when you're, when you're you know, committing to purchase a condo that is not yet built is, is you know, is what is happening in the city, specifically exactly. what is happening in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to take a look at the core of Miami, specifically, you know, Miami Beach, downtown Miami, and the financial district being Brickell. Yeah. And obviously Edgewater, which has been booming for, you know, the past uh, decade. That's the beauty of Miami, all the different neighborhoods yes. that have a different vibe and that connect so well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so when we start looking specifically at what has been going on in the real estate market in Miami for the past decade, um, ever since the 2011, um, basically, we're looking at a lot of development going on in at the beach and a lot of development going on in Edgewater. Edgewater is a neighborhood in between the design district. It's the new Miami. It's the new Miami, <laughs> correct. It's the new Miami. So, um, a lot of the development has been focused on those, in those two areas. And, and yes, there, has been, there have been some buildings going on in Brickell, uh, but mostly in those two areas. And, and when you see downtown Miami, downtown Miami has kind of been forgotten, right? Um, and there's a lot of still, there's a lot of older buildings in downtown Miami. Uh, downtown Miami has a lot of years to go to be at the level that you see Brickell or that you see Miami Beach today, right? So with that comes an opportunity, right? Uh, and what's happening in, in downtown Miami is that downtown Miami is extremely connected to all methods of transportation because we have the Virgin train uh, right here. There's no other stop in Miami uh, other than downtown Miami for this Virgin train line, which goes to Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach and will be connected to Orlando. 
Um, and then we're looking at things like Miami World Center, who is you know a huge uh, mall. That center. is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, for those who don't know, Miami World Center is the second largest development in the U.S. currently. It, it's basically about ten billion dollars in development uh, in, in the in the next. Well, it's it's been it's been built, you know, in it, within the past five to six years, and it's probably going to take another five to six years to, to be finished. So, so it's a huge project, and it's going to transform downtown Miami. So, when you look at downtown Miami being positioned in you know in a very strategic position, waterfront, it's got the museums, it's got the park, it's got the transportation, it's got these huge developments that are coming online that will transform the entire area. You're looking at a good area for potential growth, potential appreciation. It's true that, you know, 10 years ago, downtown Miami was not what it was today. And if we can, you know, have this vision, I think that's what all the developers who came here, whether they're building residential or commercial, um, have such a big vision of this, this location downtown that is connected to everything. And that's why a lot of people are coming here. It started, a lot of people came to Brickell, which is fully developed right now. Um, and it's just right next to downtown. There's also Edgewater, obviously, the design district, but downtown is kind of the core of Miami. Yeah, and downtown still has a long way to go, and that's the beauty of it. It's that it's not something that is ready, that is beautiful already, that is charming, that is, you know, it's already appreciated. That's the beauty of downtown, that, it, that you're coming in, especially when you're buying something that is going to take three years to get ready, right? You're yeah. coming in and you're, you're, going to, you're going to take advantage of that, of that growth. Exactly. That's, that's, yeah. where, that's where Antigua comes in. So, so I like to give the people that background knowledge of downtown Miami and what is happening here um, before we even get started because I think it's, it's to me, the most important thing. Exactly. Let me check something because I think my friend John Wilson wants to be in the video, may have a question. Hold on one second. Let's see if my boy John is here. So John is a good friend at Elwin and uh, the Boca office. Oh, awesome. Where is John? There he is. <laughs> What's going on, man? How are you? John, John is in the house. Searching for property and listening. All is good. Love the information. Keep it going. Awesome. So John's a great guy. I'm going to take him down here and show him around you know, downtown and Nativo and all these things. Great. Great, great. great. Yeah, so yeah. excited to hear everything that's going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, information. Good content. Keep it going. Appreciate awesome. It. Thank you, John. And uh, uh, we're going to continue the, the, the conversation, and uh, I'll see you very soon. Sounds good, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we are back. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we're talking about Miami, and, and also one of the, the great things that is happening here in Miami now, to very close to, to Nativo, actually is this signature bridge, um, which is going to transform this whole area. Yes, I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very um, innovative what they're doing. The, the, the main highway that connects the mainland of Miami, you know, the Edgewater, Brickwell, and downtown neighborhood, which is 396, they call it the Dolphin Expressway. This main highway comes, breaks downtown in half, so it breaks downtown in, in two parts. The, the southern part is, you know, the core of downtown Miami, and the northern part is the Edgewater area. It goes right into the two neighborhoods, right? Divides both neighborhoods in half. It's very low, so it's not very glamorous, it's not beautiful. The land below that, that highway is, is very unusual. Uh, unusable, I'm sorry, because there's, there's nothing to do there. Um, and it's basically mostly abandoned land. And something I've seen over the years, I think, which is remarkable in Miami, compared to a lot of US cities, is the way they approach transportation. I think transportation in Miami has tremendously evolved. Um, and I think also a lot of bigger cities in the US are, are you know, one thing example of Miami because we're growing so fast, we're developing so many great things uh, from the transportation to the way of living. And I think that's why it's called the magic city. Um, and there's, you know, so much growth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it, this bridge project is very exciting. 
But basically, they're going to do is they're going to take this old bridge, they're going to tear it down, they're going to uh, build a new one next to it and connect, you know, the ends. Exactly. And they're going to raise that new bridge to a much greater height to allow more space downstairs. They're going to redesign the landscaping, they're going to make it more beautiful. It's going to make the transition between the arts and entertainment district and the port of downtown Miami more glamorous. People are going to be able to walk around, you know. It's going to feel like a real walkable city, you know. Exactly. So, so all of these things are happening right here, and it's, this is amazing. So, so yeah. So, um, Nativo. Let's talk a little bit about Nativo. So we'll talk a little bit about Nativo, and then uh, I'll take the phone, and actually we'll, we'll show you. We'll try to show you a little quick presentation about the project, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions, if you want any presentations, just put in your email um, in the comments or DM me and I'll send you information about the project, but it's truly a phenomenal project. So talk to us about how Nativo came to life. So Nativo came to life uh, because there, there's a huge demand in Miami for buildings that are able to um, that are able to allow the owners to rent their property short term without any hassle, mm -hmm. right? So this is basically what 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 you know make the building come to, to fruition. Now, Miami is a very good market for people to own short-term condos, or because you know the the, the tourism. There's a lot of people coming to Miami. To, yes. Yeah. yeah. The tourism market here is huge. Mm -hmm. So you know, let's say you can rent an apartment. You know, any any apartment in a fairly you know what what would you say as for your experience, Benjamin? What would you say? A, a, a nice one bedroom apartment, you know, with a city view or a water view in a very recent building, new building in Miami, yeah. with good amenities. What would you say a one bedroom would rent for on, on an average for, for a year, meaning like month, month, like every month? For a year, you can have a very nice one bedroom amenity building with a view for around per, per month? Per month. $2,000 a month. That's, That's pretty true. much the price exactly. average. Yeah. Around $2,000 exactly. in the Brickell and downtown area. You can have Beautiful park. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. So the average is going to be about two thousand for for these for these buildings. Now, if you take two thousand and you divide it by thirty days, it's going to give you about uh, seven five eighty dollars per exactly. day. This is this is the income that the owner, the property owner, is going to make. Now, if you short term rent this apartment, if you're able to rent it on a daily basis, you're you're basically going to be able to charge between one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars a night. So, so you're doubling or you're almost that's tripling. That's quite a a good return on investment. Yeah, of course. Of course. So you're doubling or tripling your, 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 your income if you do rent a short term. So this is this is basically what and by the way, this came to life because of Airbnb, because of companies like Airbnb. They started to do very well in 2015 and they brought this wave here to Miami that these people wanted to buy properties to Airbnb. So the developer sat down and he said, hmm, why don't I create a condo where people that are owning in the that their owners in the condo can rent their apartment short, short term however they like okay so they can rent it daily they can rent it monthly they can rent it yearly they can also manage it however they want because one of the big downsides of these condo hotel apartments here in miami the older ones the ones that already yeah. exist is that they don't let you manage it how you want so they have a hotel program they force you to go to your hotel program, hotel program. Yeah, or if you want to manage it yourself, there's some blackout dates. You can't you can't stay in your apartment whenever you want. So from what I know here, you have uh, on-site 24-hour concierge to help you manage. That's correct. Yeah. But the, the beauty is that it's not it's not mandatory. So when you own here, you can uh, use the apartment full time. You can live in, in the building if you yeah. wish to. You can rent it however you like. And my favorite is you that you can manage it however you like. This, that gives you more freedom, you know? And I assume you can manage it even from distance if there's an Antigo app. And yes. It's very, very simple to manage from anywhere in the world. Yeah, it's, it's a very modern building, obviously, so we're not going to have actual, uh, you know, uh, traditional locking mechanisms in the doors. It's all going to be computerized. Yep. So from your phone as an owner, you're going to have access to the Nativo app, which is going to you know, tell you the calendar of bookings, you're going to know when your unit is booked for the month. Very simple to manage. Very simple to manage. You're going to see who's in your apartment, you know, you're going to be able to send them uh, a login keys, a logout yeah. keys, if you don't want them to get back in your apartment. So you have full control from abroad, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so Nativo is an exciting project because of the location. It's located right in front of the, the Freedom Tower. Which is across the street from the American Airlines Arena. It's in yeah. four of them in Miami, walking distance to museums, to parks, to train station, all of that. So it's perfect for short term. Number one, number two, all the apartments are delivered fully furnished and finished. So that's great because usually developers in Miami they deliver, you know, without floor, without closets, without blinds, without everything is in. 
everything is done. And that's a huge advantage because from the number one day, you're going to be able to live in it or you're going to be able to rent it out. Exactly. So, so after the little presentation we'll show you, here we're in the sales office, we can give you a little sneak peek of how the kitchen is going to be, how the bathrooms are going to be, so you get a really an idea of the, the high quality for, for such you know, great apartments. Yeah. So one question you asked me earlier is who, where are buyers are coming from? Who they are? I think it's very interesting to talk about, of course. Um, and, and, and what is going on with the bottom? So, so the project is set to break ground in the beginning of next year, okay? Um, and it's set to be uh, delivered to buyers in the middle of 2023, okay? So basically buyers will need to put 20% down today, uh, another 20% down when the project begins construction, and 10% down one year before delivery, which we call a top off, right? So it's 50% uh, up front divided in these three payments and 50% of closing, which they can finance. Mm -hmm. Now, buyers are pretty much, lately, um, they're, they're coming from within the US, most, most of them. Uh, I would say places like New York, uh, I mean, obviously New York is a huge feeder market for Miami. Of course, right now it's, it's, it's the main market that's coming to Miami. Exactly, and New Yorkers, you know, love Miami because it's very close and they love the weather and they love the fact that, you know, the, their dollars can buy them a lot more than they can get over there. The New Yorkers have a lot of buying power, so when they live in Miami, they, they yes, it's the, it's the good luck. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Very similarly, California is also coming to buy here as well because of the same reasons. Um, we have places like Chicago, uh, New Jersey, pretty much you know all, all of the high tax states within the U.S. are are you know thinking of really getting to Miami right now um, with everything that's going on. Uh, we also obviously has, have always had markets like Mexico, which have been lately have been huge buyers. Yeah, that's a big market here. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Colombia has been a huge market for a long time. Uh, Brazil now is more. Is more, you know, I would, I would, I would say they're not really involved with buying in buying in Miami because the dollar is very strong and the real is very weak. Yeah. So the purchasing power is very low. Um, but I think we're going to see them coming back here in a little bit. Um, so yeah, those those are our main buyers, mostly you know wealthy, high net worth Americans, um, and then you know high net worth Latin Americans. And and so what is the price range of the different uh, uh, apartments you can have at Nativo, and where do you get? Yeah. So the the studios, which are uh, around 500 square feet, uh, they're they're starting at 350 thousand dollars. So we have a very accessible price range. You know? Very accessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it starts at 350 thousand. Yeah. Um, the one bedrooms, which are the one bedroom and two bedrooms, are our most popular models because they're bigger units and they can accommodate more people and they're true residences, right? They have terraces, they have full kitchens and all that. So the one bedroom start at 450. Uh, and the two bedrooms start at six sixty, so um, it, you know four fifty for one bedroom is also very accessible as well in this kind of project. And, and this may be ready for twenty twenty three, but you're ready. How much sold out? We're we're half sold. We're fifty percent sold. Fifty percent sold out already. Right? Yes, fifty percent sold, and that's with contracts in, with deposits in. Um, so that's that. Those are firm buyers who are already you know committed to purchasing the condo. So I'm looking at the different questions so we can try to you know engage with the conversation. So there's my friend Margot, so shout out to Margot, she's an amazing mortgage broker. Uh, so Nativo just allows the buyers to manage themselves on Airbnb. No, so that's a great question. So we're actually not affiliated with any uh, uh, hotel brand or any uh, booking platform specifically. Um, we're an open concept, okay? So the hotel that's gonna be in the building is gonna be called Nativo Miami. It's a new hotel brand that the developer is creating. Um, the developer is the Goblet family office. Some of you may know Russell Goblet. He's the, the chairman of the Norwegian Cruise Lines. He's also one of the three principals of Crescent Heights. Very big developers in, in the US. Um, so they're creating their own hotel brand and, and we are unaffiliated with anybody. So people, when they self-manage, not only will they be able to manage their condos and list them on any platform, meaning Airbnb, Booking.com, Trivego, HomeAway, whatever you name it, it's all going to be possible. Um, but they're also going to be able to obviously hire anybody that they want to manage it for them and do the same thing or hire the hotel. Another question she has is, uh, what is the management HOA fee? So that's a good question. So the HOA is actually pretty accessible um, for the amount of amenities that we have in the building. Um, so I'll give you an example. For example, the, the studio is um, comes out about three hundred and thirty dollars per month, and that includes um, water, that includes cable, and that includes internet. Really, so you know, three hundred and thirty is, is very very low HOA per month. Uh, if you rent the studio for two nights, you already 
pay the HOA for the month, you know? Okay. Um, and I'll give you another example. Yeah. For the one bedroom, for example, which is one of the most popular yeah. models, we have different models of one bedroom, you know, smaller ones, bigger ones. Uh, for the smaller ones, it's $440 per month for the one bedroom. Model. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. And we have a, a last question here. Can buyers be international? Of course, of course. There's, of that's course. actually, you know, that, a lot of people that are international buying that's, there. That's Miami. That's Miami. So maybe, uh, maybe they want to know, you know, how they can purchase being international. So, so actually, it is a misconception that, that international buyers uh, can have a hard time buying a condo in Miami or in the U.S., for the, for the matter of fact, um, because actually, you know, foreign people are, are very welcome to buy a real estate in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, for foreigners, you know, it's easier to get a, a, a mortgage in, in Miami specifically because you know, since foreigners don't have you know a tax history in the U.S., exactly. since they don't have credit history, all that is required from them is cash. Show me the money, right? <laughs> cash is king. <laughs> cash is king. So typically, a local person like me or like Benjamin, we if you want to buy a house, if you want to buy a condo, the bank will require from us you know twenty percent, twenty. You know, 25 percent, depending on the deal. Um, for foreigners, usually banks have much higher requirements for deposits. You know, it's going to be from 35 percent to 40 percent, or 45 percent sometimes, depending on where you're from. Now, with these higher deposit requirements, come less requirements when it comes to background. You know, the, the credit report, and the taxes, and, and you know, etc. Et, et so, really, the only thing that you need to buy in Miami as a foreigner is a valid form of identification, like you know, your passport, your visa. Um, you don't have to have a visa to buy here. You just have to have a passport and the money. That's exactly. it. That's <laughs> and, and yeah, so my, my friend Margot Itegi, she's awesome. So anybody who's looking to buy in Miami, is a foreigner and needs financing, reach out to Margot. Her Instagram is the real queen Margot. She's awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's see a little presentation of Nativo. You yeah. want to show us a little? Sure. Sure. Hold on, guys. Sure. Here we go. Bear with me one second, and I'm going to show you a little presentation by Danette. Hold on. Okay. I think I think I think I'm going to show them what the building looks like. Right. Uh, this is going to be more fun than talking about technical aspects, which I've been talking about. So this is what the building looks like from the exterior. Okay. You can see here we're very close by to the American Airlines Arena. Okay. Let me show you more pictures of downstairs. This is the the Sixth Street, which is the street that goes into the Port of Miami. Okay, and this is what the, the lobby will look like from the outside. This is very true to, to Miami, and this is why the name is Nativo. They want people to feel like you know they're staying in a subtropical island when they come to the building. So you know the decoration is very, very uh, you know, earthy tones, you know, very natural lighting everywhere, a lot of trees, a lot of foliage, natural stones. So this is what the project will look like. Let me show you the beautiful uh, pictures of the amenities that we have. So let me let me skip all this and show you the the actual picture. So we're look at have, this. Look at how beautiful this is going to be. Yeah, we're going to have three floors of amenities. We're going to be connected by a huge staircase that's going to spawn these three floors. Okay, so you're going to be able to use this staircase and obviously the elevators uh, to move about the amenities. Now the amenities are all decorated by Urban Robot, which is a, a company which is actually a local company from Miami. They recently did a Gucci store in the design district. And they did part of the one hotel and homes in South Beach, which is very known here. So they're bringing their magic touch to the building. They're going to do all of the amenities. This is a social bar inside the building. Um, this is the game area, which is right next to that social area. We're going to have a private speakeasy booth, like a, a speakeasy bar inside the building, where you can have more intimate conversations. You know, I love the wood. I love the, the lighting. It reminds me this, this is an outdoor terrace, right? Yeah, it is. It reminds me of Zoho in New York, you know, the, the, how our men is looking this building. So this is the Sunset Restaurant there with a Sunset Lounge that we're going to have in the ninth floor in the pool deck, on the west side of the pool deck. This is the media room which is connected to the pool outside um, as well in that same floor. Okay, this is the pool area there on the ninth floor. And then let me show you the views because with the views you can get a, a better perspective of, of what location is. So this, this is the, these are the north views from the building. When you look from your terrace, you're going to be able to see the 395, the bridge that I mentioned earlier that was going to be rebuilt, the museums. You can have, you see Paramount Miami World Center here, the beautiful museum park. Right in by night, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. You can see here the financial district. This is the south view, which is my favorite. 
because you can see the water and you can see the city. You can see both. I love that. This is the east view, which is obviously fantastic. You can see the whole Biscayne Bay, Miami Beach in the background, the Port of Miami, the American Alliance Marina, Bayside. It's very beautiful. And this is the west city view, which is where the train station is, just two blocks away from the building itself. Okay? So, uh, why don't you give people a tour of, of the finishes of, of, the, sure. of the project? Let's do it. Guys, let's do this. So, here we're in the sales gallery. So here is the maquette of Nativo, and here is this beautiful kitchen, which I believe will be in all of the apartments, something quite similar. That's correct, yeah. So this kitchen is the standard model kitchen that will be included in all the apartments except the penthouses. Um, the penthouses are going to have uh, upgraded kitchens, um, but everything else is going to look like this. This is the standard that the hotel and that the developer is going with, uh, basically to establish that luxury standard within the building. Right? Exactly. So all the cabinets are going to be from Italcraft, imported from Italy. The um, appliances are all going to be American-made, which is a uh, Gen Air. It's a, it's a very good American brand. It's a luxury brand of Whirlpool, actually. I'm sure yeah. everybody's familiar yeah. with Whirlpool. Uh, all of the um, the backsplash comes finished with this beautiful porcelain, and the countertops are with uh, terrazzo. Terrazzo is a, is, a, is a stone that's been used in Florida for hundreds of years. Exactly. It's very durable. So, so now let's go see the, should we go see the, yes, the bathroom? Yes. So we have, uh, we have a little model bathroom here to showcase the finishes. So this is the actual flooring that will be in the bathrooms. It's the porcelain flooring. The flooring inside the units is going to be a, a porcelain flooring as well. Uh, uh, white grayish in color. Yep. So th these are the accents you see, the, the brass accents in the kitchen and in the bathrooms. This is very nativo. Um, the same wooden cabinets there, and this is quartz for the finishes of, yeah. the, of the countertops. And then here, we have a very nice yeah. wall finish. You can see the accents, the brass accents as well in the shower, and the porcelain in the wall of, of the, the shower. So hold on, I'm, we're going to get back. Here we are. So Margot has another question. So first, she wanted to know when are they breaking ground? So break ground, groundbreaking, groundbreaking, is, yeah. groundbreaking is at the beginning of next year. I would say... Beginning of twenty. 21. Yeah, 2021. I would say to be safe, you could say between January and March of next year. Okay. Yeah. And the last question, has COVID-19 affected any of the building structure, spacing or units or social areas? Just curious. Yes, actually, that's a great Very question. Yes, yes. So, so what we have done ever since COVID started is uh, we've been lucky to still be in the planning phase of the building and we're still able to all alter some things around to accommodate the building better for these types of concerns, right, when it comes to the COVID situation. So what we have actually done is we have created, within the, all of the amenity areas, we have created, instead of glass windows that you can, you know, open or close, we have created accordion-style glass windows that can be left completely open so that the fresh air from the outside can come in all the time within the amenities and people that are inside the amenities area, in the bar, in the social lounge, all of that, just can have that fresh air. Because of what I know, I think that not only Nativo, but a lot of new developments in the uh, downtown Miami area, uh, and even in Miami, but I know specifically here, are conscious of you know, the, the COVID-19 situation and are you know, adapting of course. Uh, all their buildings. I know also the Miami World Center is also you know, doing something uh, for this you know, situation. It's, I, I think it's called like a health center. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, every, everybody's adapting, so. Yeah. yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. So, guys, this is the end of uh, BT Talks with Danette at Nativo. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me, call me, um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you want any brochures, digital or paper, paper let me know. Uh, feel free to also reach out to Danette. He's on Instagram as well. And uh, make sure to follow Nativo as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, guys. Have a good one. Awesome.